Welcome back to Golden Rule Radio. Boy, this is going to be a fun show. We have gold breaking out. We have the dollar at a multi-year low. It's below 90 today. We have a treasury secretary who's endorsing a weaker dollar. And oh yeah, Trump, he's endorsing a weaker dollar too. So which direction is the dollar going and which direction is gold going? Let's start this off, guys. So where do you want to start, Robert? Gold or the dollar? Seems like both because the dollar year to year over year is down what, Tori, 14%? Exactly. And gold, what's gold to up? Uh, 14%. <laughs> so <laughs> all of you who do follow, you know, the corresponding relationship that the U.S. dollar has and gold being priced in U.S. dollars, there you go. Well, and I'm just going to repeat what you said last week about where the dollar's going down to that sub-90, even into the 88-ish range. Uh, where we have some levels on previous charts. We've got some FIB levels there. We've got some old highs uh, and some previous lows. So we've got a number of points right in the 88 range, and I think we're going to see another couple point drop in the dollar before it makes a decision what it's going to do from there. How about Steve Mnuchin, our U.S. Treasury Secretary? He's saying it too from Davos, Switzerland, that a weaker U.S. dollar is economically beneficial for the U.S. So you know this is agenda, and Trump's been very forthright with that. Well, I wonder how the globalists feel about the America first policies showing up in Davos. Well, at least Trump is going to conservative values first in the form of tax cuts rather than jumping right into protectionism. So I'm sure that the globalists are at least a little bit happy about that. He does, on the other hand, however, have the power of the tariff, and he is doing that in single item fashion to make sure that we are remaining competitive. But to Robert's point, it really is all about the dollar. Yeah, I want to point something out about the dollar. If you zoom out on the chart and you go back to when the dollar was at its low around 72, if you look at the difference between 72 being the low on the dollar index, it rose all the way to 103 right here at the the 2017 turn, 16 to 17. The half of that is right around 88. So you've got the 50% line between 72 and 103 about where we're dropping into right now with the dollar index below 90, I think that 50% line somewhere around 88. So not only is the tax cut affecting our bottom line as well as the value of our dollar long term, we're also seeing some effects over on the populist opinion in Germany and Europe as a whole. So Merkel is now coming out and warning against the quote unquote poison of American right-wing populism, saying that isolation is not the answer. However, it sounds like some of her constituency within her own country is calling for tax cuts on their end as well. Well, and she can call it American populism or or right-wing, whatever she wants, but this is global nationalism that you're witnessing. And it started back in 2016. So can you stop that train? I don't think so. I mean, not until it ends up crashing or... or running through the end of the track, quite frankly, you can call it populism, but the nationalism thing's here to stay. And look at the the Wall Street Journal yesterday. They have a great article on the fact that nationalism is growing and it's just a matter of how strong and how quickly and in what form or fashion. Well, and let's not forget that even during the Obama years when we were having issues in Portugal and Italy and Greece and Cyprus and the German public was having to pick up the bill for a lot of that. Uh, The German public was calling for more nationalism even a number of years ago while it was fitting the bill for a lot of European issues in other countries. Well, and for any nation that's got an employment issue, I mean, just look at the United States. I mean, Goldman Sachs is calling now for a reduction in our unemployment rate. You can hardly get any lower. We're already at a 17-year low. And now because of the tax cuts, which call it populism or nationalism, whatever you want, but they're suspecting that by year's end, we're going to be at 3.5% and then 3.3% in 2019. Again, that's due to the tax cuts, and that would be the lowest since the early 1950s. So it does work. It's also due to them changing the formula. And, you know, when you have what? Totally one, agree. Yeah, I know you do. And I know you know that. But, uh, you know, when you have like one-third of the whole population not in the workforce, it's just, what does it mean when you say unemployment? Right. And wages aren't keeping up. When you really see a huge boost in wages and in the competitive nature of the job market from a salary standpoint, then yeah, then we'll be talking about real numbers. Well, and wages may not be keeping up. A cost of living sure is, especially looking at like what we talked about with the oil charts last week, oil up 50% throughout last year or since the middle of last year. Uh, We're looking at the rest of the precious metals and industrial metals coming up pretty strong uh, starting in that bottom in December. 
Speaking of metals, we have silver really rallying today. And I think it's up the most in a day that it has been in a while. I can't quote the the number, but it's up almost 3%. Platinum's rallying today. We're looking good with the metals, guys. Yeah, silver up 12% since that December low. Granted, the platinum pricing is beating just about everything, I think, right now up about 17% since the December lows. So both of those metals are having exceptionally strong starts to the year. Palladium, which has continued to be just the parabolic monster, the way it's been climbing, uh, is now kind of hovering in that 1100 mark. And speaking of parabolic charts, have you guys seen the Dow chart lately? It's just incredible. That's actually up 32% year over year. But that to me speaks to the disconnect, you know, the, the level of speculation in that market. And just look, just go look at a one-year chart of the Dow. It's just incredible how it's just a pretty unhindered climb, but yet so much more significant than what gold is doing or what the dollar is doing from a negative standpoint. Or the transports, you know, they've done pretty well, show of economic strength, but it's only up 18% year over year. What is the Dow doing up 32? Well, and while the press is paying attention to the rise in the Dow, which has been substantial and, and should be recognized, quietly behind the scenes, what we've been talking about is that 25% rise in gold over the last two years. And we're now looking at pushing against the September highs in the 1350s from last year. So I think we are going to, in a very short period of time here, see the highs Robert talked about a couple shows ago up in the 1370s, and then we're finally going to have that nice breakout as we push into the 1400s. Yeah, so I'm going to talk about how to play it from here because, you know, you look at the the show that we did early December, we stressed that was the opportunity. It bottomed a few days later. And we're up about $100 with gold since then. So for those of you who may have taken advantage of the opportunity, we know a few of you. We appreciate the trust. We also hope that you benefited from it. But if you didn't, if you're now listening to the show with maybe some regret saying, I missed the move, you haven't missed the move. We are only just getting started with gold. And with gold pushing, you know, this previous high of 1375, it's possible we see a pullback in here. I, I said earlier this month, you need to be buying on weakness. If we see any weakness here, that's your time to accumulate. That's the the point where you're going to have the opportunity to buy before we head into the next five months, I'd say, of gold continuing to rise, silver rising, platinum rising, dollar continuing to fall. So this is going to be an opportunity if you see some weakness and take advantage of it. Call us. We can tell you what strategies to employ. I appreciate you adding the white metals in there, Robert, because part of that strategy is silver and it is platinum. Miles points out the recent performance of platinum and palladium, but platinum has outperformed palladium in that same period of time since the December lows, and it has narrowed that ratio. And remember, that platinum to palladium ratio is where we get our biggest free ounce or ounce accumulation gains within a portfolio. You need to have an upper limit set to say, I'm going for it, I'm getting in because it's going to run a long way. Well, the other thing you have to focus on is the ratio. We don't always focus on price. I, a lot of times, couldn't care less what the price is doing. All I care about is the relative price between the metals. Ounces that and ounces. That is telling me, absolutely, That's right. right? That's what's telling me what to do with that client's portfolio. So again, to Robert's point, don't feel like you missed anything. There is still ridiculous value in the markets. And come on, guys, let's be serious here over the last two years. And what people need to recognize in any market is that every pullback is higher than the last one was. And that's just the nature of a climbing market. Every opportunity you miss, the next opportunity that shows up is less advantageous to you. We had opportunities at 1050. We had opportunities at 1150. We had opportunity at 12 and a quarter. We had opportunity at 1300. How much opportunity was there when the platinum ratio was 0.8 instead of 0.9, or the gold silver ratio was 80 instead of 68? So as the opportunities continue to present themselves, we'll keep you apprised. So Tori, Robert, I know we've been talking about the ratio trading strategies for, well, over a year now, and we're going to continue to do so. Uh, So any listener out there that hasn't been through uh, how our ratio trading strategies work, you can definitely go to our website. We'll put a link down in the show notes and download our Double Your Ounces flyer uh, or give us a call to discuss how these strategies can be presented either within your personal account, storage metals accounts, uh, or even within your retirement accounts, which is actually an exceptional place to do it because of the tax advantages. 
And there are actually two strategies that our company has pioneered, ratio trading and premium swapping. So we can educate you on both of those. Call us at 800-525-9556. Follow us on Twitter at ICA Gold. Or if you like what you hear, click the subscribe button below. Thanks for listening. And have a great week. Mm -hmm.